Our next speaker is Barbara Rubim. Barbara is a climate and energy campaigner at Greenpeace in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where she focuses mainly on solar energy. In her work, she advocates, lobbies, and works closely with partners, and even climbs onto rooftops to install solar panels. Previously, Barbara worked as a parliamentary legal advisor and a researcher for the city's ministry in Brazil. She holds a degree in law from the Pontifical Catholic University of Minas Gerais. Barbara. Well, good evening. I'm pleased to be here with you today and to be able to tell a story we are very keen on telling because it is a story that connects two major issues from nowadays. The need to promote sustainable development and the need to reduce social inequality. But first, I would like to tell you why we do what we do. This graph might be familiar to some of you since it synthesizes one of the few things from nowadays that connects, unites and threats us all. And although I might as well be talking about Facebook, unfortunately, it's climate change. Climate change is affecting millions of people from all over the world due to the increase of extreme weather events. And Brazilians are becoming quite familiar with it, especially after the last three years that held 25% of all the extreme weather events from my country's history. These pictures are examples of what we've been facing for the last 12 months. And in times like this, we generally tend to ask ourselves, what have we done wrong? Well, in our case, the answer is not that hard to find. We have embraced the use of thermal plants in our matrix in a way that made the energy sector the fastest growing in our country. And that's not all. We have refused to see the benefits of renewable energies, and solar is now the most taxated source from my country. That basically means that if you live in Brazil and if you want to buy a PV system, you will probably pay 30 to 40% more than you should because of taxations. And still, our government refuses to tackle climate change, claiming that we have social and economic issues to solve first. But what if we could show the government that by investing in renewable energies, we would actually be solving all those issues at once? Well, that's what we've aimed to do. And if you think about a place that connects community, youth, and public power around all those issues, that place could only be a school. That's why one year ago, we have decided to install PV systems in two public schools located in poor communities in Brazil. And to make sure this showcase would also help us address political issues, we have decided to do one school in the state that has already gave exemptions for solar, and another school in the state that, although it's national relevance, has refused to do so. That last state is Sao Paulo, and we wanted to change its policy. So, having chosen the schools, we still needed money to make this project come true. And we strongly believe that this could not be a Greenpeace project. This needed to be everyone's project so people would actually feel empowered to replicate it everywhere. So we have done a crowdfunding campaign and asked people to help us make this dream come true. But we were also aware that an online tool wasn't enough to raise all the awareness, engagement and empower we were seeking. So we have decided to select 30 people among more than 2,000 candidates and train them to help us spread the message that a better future is possible and sometimes it can start at a rooftop. To make sure this brave group of people would be ready for their mission, we have gathered them together for three days and we have trained them on how to cook using solar energy, how to produce electricity with it, how to install a PV system, how to lobby, and how to do creative interventions for better spread this knowledge. One month later, we took this group to the two schools previously selected, and there they have not only installed the PV systems, but they have also developed several activities with the whole community involved. We stood only four days in each of the schools, and the numbers are incredible. 1,800 children, 125 parents, and 20 teachers are now more aware of the benefits of solar energy for their lives and their communities than they were before. But as renewable energy also means jobs, our solar multipliers, as we kindly call them, were not alone in this task. They were joined by four youngs from a neighborhood community very known in the city for its high hate of criminality and drug dealing. We have trained these four young, and at the end of the installations, one of them, Jefferson, you can see him on the picture, 
was hired by the solar company that was helping us. Because of all the prejudice this younger saw from, from the community, that was his first job. The systems we install will produce an economy of $10,000 a year for both schools. But as the system belonged to the community and was financed by the community, we didn't feel like it was fair for the public power to behold the savings. So we have done an agreement with both governments. And for eight years, all the economy provided by the systems will be returned to the schools with the one condition that it needs to be used to uh, provide more recreative and cultural activity for the students. And we have told that to those children and we've asked them what would they like this money to provide them. Their answers are condensed and compiled in this world cloud. They wanted nothing extraordinary. And my aunt used to say that happiness is the ability to find joy in simple things. And I guess those children taught me a great deal about it this day. Well, our project went live five months ago, and still the results goes beyond our imagination. We have managed to get the tax exemption we were seeking for in the state of Sao Paulo, and this has influenced the whole country. We have spread our message to millions of people through social network and other people that are interested. And our solar multipliers are being invited to replicate this project everywhere. When this project first started, it was about four people that dreamed they could make it come true. March this year, we became 34 people. In May, there was almost 2,000 people. And now, we are all here in this room united. So I guess the biggest lesson I have from this project, and that I hope is what you take home with you, is that we hold power to create change that goes beyond our imagination. And I don't mean Greenpeace. I mean each one of us, me, you, us, together. So I hope you are now as excited to spread this revolution everywhere as I have been for the past eight years of my life. Thank you very much.